Hello everyone, this is Gary from Fantastic Fundas and today in this lecture we are going to talk about a very very important personality from modern history of India and his name is Subhash Chandra Bose. Before we talk about him, I will need to build up certain background to this topic and you already know this, it will be just a quick reminder and what I will be doing now, I'll just point down few things over here that we have already done which links this to the earlier thing. The, if you remember we talked about the Congress and the elections starting from lecture number 63-64 and then we talked about so many other things. For example, we talked about the peasant movement in the 1930s and then about the freedom struggle uh, in the princely states and then we talked about the capitalist and the nationalist movement and then the foreign policy of India during this phase and then communalism. Now so much has happened and Congress has won also but then in this moment came crisis. Bad things always come up, good things always come up but now the bad phase was sort of a bad phase was starting. What was this crisis? This crisis essentially dealt with Subhash Chandra Bose. Uh, he, as an, he was an essential part of this whole thing. And the crisis was, we cannot say exactly that he was the reason of crisis. There were other, others were equally the reason of this crisis. It was the difference of ideology. It was the difference of the methodology of working. It was a fight between Gandhi and Subhash Chandra Bose. We will be talking about this and thus to understand this whole crisis we need to understand in detail about who was Subhash Chandra Bose and what he did for Indian freedom struggle. Subhash Chandra Bose he was um, born in Katak and and that he, he was uh, was born on 23rd of January 1897. Subhash Chandra Bose cleared Indian Civil Services examination. Oh yes, he is he was a very intelligent person. And not just he cleared, he had very high marks at that time. And uh, regarding uh, yeah, regarding his parents, he was uh, born to his father's name was uh, Janki Nath Bose and his mother's name was Prabhavati Devi, Jankinath Bose and Prabhavati Devi and to them was born S.C. Bose, Subhash Chandra Bose. Now he then grew up and cleared Indian civil services and then you know he even resigned from the civil services by in 1920 and he remarked you know he said that why i am resigning and the reason was that he said the best way to end a government is to withdraw from it that withdraw from it and that was the reason for which subhash chandra bose withdrew or rather resigned while all this happened subhash chandra bose was influenced by swami vivekanand that's number one and number two aurobindo ghosh and uh, Subhash Chandra Bose also had a mentor in Chitranjan Das. So this question can be asked anywhere that who was his guru or the mentor and then also about the ideologies that played role in designing what Subhash Chandra Bose did. And not just this, if you are aware that what Subhash, uh, what uh, Swami Vivekanand did or Aurobindo Ghosh did, then it will be much easier to understand why and Subhash Chandra was doing whatever he was doing. And you know, once he resigned from the Indian Civil Services, he worked for the Bengal Provincial Congress Committee. Because Congress was always uh, heading every kind of nationalist movement that was happening at this time. So he goes to Bengal 
provincial congress committee and in 1920s most of the people remember subhash chandra bose only for his contribution in in the 1930s and the 1940s but in 1920s he you know, did one very important work and that was to mobilize all bengal young men's conference so the question that is asked in paper will be as simple as this that who was the person who mobilized all bengal young men's conference such a simple question but the contribution was so huge that it is often asked in the paper and uh, in fact it it uh, after this in 1925 for all his works he was arrested and sent to jail and he he was sent to this burma jail and there it is believed that um, he he contracted some disease uh, probably it was tb and then anyway after 2 years he was released in 1927 and after his release he started working uh, quite uh, art, uh, passionately for the freedom movement along with nehru and it was in this context this work of nehru and subhash chandra bose that earlier also when i was discussing with you the decade of 1930s we talked about bose bose at that time now you see uh, he he did uh, participate in the civil disobedience movement that was brought by gandhi ji and he was sent to jail for his participation in that movement and in he was so popular a person that in the jail itself he was elected as mayor of calcutta so that becomes an important event that did he participate in the cdm the civil disobedience movement often people think that gandhi and subhash chandra bose were in complete opposition to each other but the truth is there were definitely some agree- agreeable points between them and cdm is an example of it though it is of the earlier part of the subhash chandra bose's contribution to the nationalist struggle now of course there were differences between gandhi and bose for example uh, bose said that if someone slaps you once you st- slap him twice that was his philosophy that was his thought that that can mean a arguable thing whether we agree to, to it or not but that was him he used to say that and after his release from the jail in, in the decade of the 1930s he traveled a lot he went to meet mussolini and hitler you know just and we will discuss all this in the world history lecture series just remember this thing of course you must be aware of these are very popular names of these names anyway so um he he met mussolini and all the people and then came a very important turning point which really changed the course of history of india and that was the elections of the 1937 we have already discussed this that how congress won the elections and all the story now the ministries were formed and subhash chandra bose he was somewhat critical of these ministries of the congress because he felt that the work was not being done at the pace at which it should have been done in any case um, under the presidentship of subhash chandra bose so who is the president here s c bose is the president under his presidentship congress met in haripura please locate this place on the map of india haripura it was in 1938 that congress met here and this particular session is important for us to know because subhash chandra bose had a critical role to play this session also will expose the differences within the congress and thus that would have impact on the coming uh, decade that is 1940s for those of you who do not know where haripura is it is located in the surat district in gujarat and uh, it's very near to actually a uh, bardoli i hope you do remember bardoli satyagraha haripura is located near to that you know regarding this place a uh, haripura when this session was held and subhash chandra bose was elected the president of it and when he went there more than 
फाइव लाख पीपल अटेंडेड दैट प्रोसेशन एंड हिज चैरियड इट वॉज बींग ड्रिवन बाई फिफ्टी वन बुलक्स द दर लॉट ऑफ बुलक कार्ड्स ऑफ दैट सो द वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग स्टोरी रिगार्डिंग दैट यू कैन ऑलवेज रीड इट समेर एल्स बिकॉज दैट विल गो बियॉन्ड द एम्बिट ऑफ दिस लेक्चर नाउ इन दिस सेशन ऑफ नाइनटीन हंड्रेड थर्टी एट बोस had this very important emphasis on his opposition to federalism uh, for example in the central legislative assembly the budget that was proposed in 1938 57% vote at the center 57% of the budget was going to defense and it was rejected but even then the viceroy passed this uh, budget over here the governor general now it both said that how can you do this and it was because of this federalistic nature and thus both was opposed to the british type of federalism at of that era and in his presidential speech both also talked about the peasant and the worker you see even if you don't know uh, how to write you know uh, the th- things about this just think over you know what kind of personality boss is and you also know that what kind of people boss will support and since he is the president he is it is a political speech and of course there are personal elements involved also in it he is definitely going to talk about these people so for for the people who are listening to this video for the purpose of any examination you can always imagine things also and there is a probability you will not go wrong now this is not the best method of doing the things but if you're stuck then there there is something to do now let's see what else bose did here in this session uh, apart from the things that i have already shared with you he also uh, said that we should oppose britishers directly why because to say it in bose's own words he said that british britain's peril is india's opportunity britain's peril is india's opportunity now he wanted to take an advantage of the situation but gandhi had difference on this opinion gandhi has been quite uh, inactive in his politics in the decade of 1930s there wasn't much activity by him but gandhi understood as he understood the things and i believe that he rightly understood the things because they were based on uh, quite on logical grounds and that is that the masses are not ready for any thing like direct struggle because to over or the britishers to win over them you will have to have a very strong force and the forces indian people are not ready for that so this led to the division of argument between people and then there's one more point on which bose and gandhi differed and that was uh, regarding the economy now Ga- gandhian economic system model was different from the bose because bose thought that we need proper industrialization also to grow and not just this he was in support of um, the quite a, a purely socialistic kind of state for india for the first 20 years especially before india could move ahead in other things and not just this um, because of this his uh, his belief in economic policy he even organized npc that is national uh, planning committee and this national planning committee became india's uh, planning commission later on and which today is called as niti ayog so whenever you write answer on niti ayog you can even trace history to national planning committee and then there were some and there were some issues with uh, sardar vallabh bhai patel also um, between bose and patel and then but this does not mean that they were always fighting or arguing they were great nationalists all of them worked together for india you have to understand the context in which their differences arose and that was in the context of the a few basic principles right so this was the story of the bose as the head of the congress uh, on in 1938 session and now a lot of people had lot of issues with bose's pre- uh, presidentship in 1938 and bose himself was not happy uh, with the way the congress was working even in the 1938 because he wanted a militant sort of politics and radical groups and direct action and such such things so 
bo- bows against stood for the elections in 1939 and this time with the aim of doing the things in his own way now the 1939 elections are not that simple and they make a very important part again of the modern history in these elections first gandhi said nehru should become the president but nehru backed uh, didn't uh, agree to what gandhi ji was suggesting then came the name of molana azad and he was supposed to be the president now but again i issue cropped in and molana azad withdrew his name so then gandhi ji gave the name of dr patta bhi sita ramaiya now please understand one thing that gandhi wasn't really liking the way bose was working and so he was in disagreement with bose's ideology but nobody was sure that who will win whether patta bhi sita ramaiya will win the elections or whether or the or bose subhash chandra bose will win the elections that remained an issue and finally in the elections were held in january 1930 in in the result bose got 1580 votes and the and patta bhi sita ramaiya dr patta bhi sita ramaiya got 1377 number of votes so by clear majority uh, bose has won over here now this was a big blow even for gandhi because somewhere gandhi knew that it is very difficult for patta bhi sita ramaiya to win over here but at the same time he wasn't happy about it because of the basic disagreement between the policies uh, uh, of fighting the britishers in any case gandhi said that the defeat is more mine than his these are the words i'm quoting you from ncrt the defeat is more mine than his and then there were other people also who opposed uh, subhash chandra bose and uh, these people were mainly r p k and these were dr rajendra prasad sardar vallabh bhai patel as i said and then uh, kriplani also opposed subhash chandra bose and the crisis regarding this the whole th- tripri you know th- this 1930s the ninth session uh, is the congress session is held at tripuri or tripri as some people call it that is the name of the place where it was held now in this session um the congress was having crisis and what is the crisis i'll talk to you that that we are talking about the 1939 the crisis in the congress in this um bose was op- openly against patel and uh, other I- leaders that i talked to you right for rajendra prasad or uh, kriplani all these people uh, they were being opposed by bose now he said that congress and why was he opposing them answering that that congress is a party of compromisers and you are compromising with the britishers and congress is the party is of the rightists and you know this this when he said you are doing this this made all the people of the congress very angry because this was a direct accusation on the people of being anti national it was a question on their nationalism and many people resigned also because of this anger but nehru did not resign he say he said that he didn't like the idea of confronting bose but he didn't agree with bose either so he thought it's better to remain in power only then you can succeed so that is how the debate starts between bose and gandhi if we talk about the basis of the bose gandhi debate few points can come up for example number 1 is the differences were on the uh, perception of the political reality so how is the perception how is the political reality are people ready or are people not ready number 2 is the assessment of the strength and the weaknesses of the congress or in other words the swot analysis of the congress on this bose and gandhi were in disagreement number 3 is preparedness of the mass struggle now this perception is regarding the political struggle what what do they these people think that how to fight british that perception and then the masses are ready as per bose but gandhi ji says that the masses are yet not ready and then there was also difference about how to build up the 
movement uh, bos and gandhi differed on this issue also actually bos always would think that the congress is ready for uh, the direct action or for the immediate mass struggle but gandhi said that i do not see support for the peasants and the workers okay so this that is why this step by gandhi is considered to be more sane than the action of bos over here because he workers peasant all these people were not ready the if i have to share one quality of gandhi this one of his greatest assets is that he knew how to catch the pulse of the people okay and this is how it was going on and uh, imagine i mean even in 1940s the support wasn't much uh because of those economic crises that had happened earlier and what time times are worst because everything gets so inflated and there were more reasons uh, of gandhi not supporting bose on these this issue and gandhian reasons were that there is corruption and indiscipline in congress gandhi was very much uh, uh, angry against the congress about this he says there were mutual rivalries and bickerings and people were backbiting people were not having trust in congress number 2 was the bogus membership now all political parties if not all many political parties today also have this bogus membership we have 1 crore members i mean you know all those numbers this bogus membership you know gandhi knew understood that not on this basis of we can uh, we can fight britishers this has to be true membership and then after this gandhi had one more wor- more worry and that was the uh, impersonation at the party elections so that was another of his worries because congress was not in the right shape and bose wanted to make his struggle based on congress which was not practical idea and because of the performance of the congress which was not really as the expectations were of the people there was general decline in the authority of the congress and gandhi understood this well he said that we need to build this up first and of course he said that the masses are not ready uh, for the struggle now if you look at the difference in the beliefs of these people imagine that uh, when bose was the president and he this is what he had to say he said that uh, in his presidential address at tripuri he says that, that uh, we should have a program of giving britishers a 6 month ultimatum that was what he is planning he is thinking to give britishers an ultimatum to grant the national demand for independence and that's complete independence when we talk in the terms of uh, uh, boss but by now even for others also it means complete independence since the swaraj resolution that was passed on 26 january earlier we have covered that and boss just wanted to launch a mass civil disobedience movement uh, if uh, Cong- uh, if the britishers do not agree to the ultimatum so these kind of issues were there then Gandhi varied on this ultimatum because Gandhi said that we must put our own house in order own house in order that is the congress before we can attack others because if we are not behaving properly then how will we defeat the britishers in the, all this war against them and not just this yeah had many other things to say that why is india not ready and you will be quite convinced listening to these and what what were those things that gandhi was saying he was saying that uh that there are commu- there is communalism going on and we covered a very long series on communalism in our lectures here you can also very well, well understand that how strong communalism was and gandhi was aware of this that with communal strifes going on india cannot have mass civil disobedience movement against the britishers and i will quote you uh, gandhi he said that if today i am asked to start the dandi march i do not have the courage for that gandhi is saying this and why because he said how can i fight britishers without the workers and the peasant support so this was the reason of a uh, gandhian opposition to the bose idea but then bose 
was still not in agreement with Gandhi in spite of all these things. And all this, this internal strife, this, this strife between Gandhi and Bose, uh, it reached to the maximum at the, the Tripuri session, which was held in March 1939. And what had happened that Bose thought that because I am the president, so people will follow me. But here, Bose made a mistake. Why I say that Bose made a mistake? Let's not call it a mistake. We can say he misjudged the meaning of the majority he got because people still were under the moral authority of Gandhi. And whatever, without Gandhi, there could not have been movement because people really believed in the Gandhian idea of that time. Masses were with Gandhi, though even though the Bose had won this election, but that doesn't mean the people did not believe in Gandhi. But then you will obviously ask me then, if that be the case, then why did people vote for uh, Subhash Chandra Bose? Because people were also restless. They wanted to do something. They wanted to do this uh, militant politics against Britishers, to which Gandhi was not in agreement. Nevertheless, in spite of all this, the uh, people of in India at that time considered Gandhi to be the supreme leader of India and they never wanted to replace Gandhi by Bose. And this led to further division between the people. But ultimately, Bose will have to step down because people are with Gandhi at that time. In fact, at this time, uh, Govind Ballapant, he moved even moved a resolution which expressed full confidence in the leadership of Gandhiji and asked the Bose to select the working committee as per the wishes of Gandhiji. And this resolution was all even passed. Now imagine how can such a resolution be passed which says that work should according to Gandhi in a, in a Congress session where the majority has just selected, uh, elected Bose as the president. Even then this resolution was passed, but then Gandhi denies that he says that Bose is the president. So he will just let him do his work. This whole issue, you know, it put uh, Bose in a dilemma. And what is that dilemma? It is that Bose, let me write it here, Bose's dilemma. Now, the dilemma of Bose is that he wanted Gandhi ji to lead the movement that even he agreed to that. But then he wanted Gandhi to lead the movement in his manner and Gandhi would not budge uh, to this argument by Bose that co Congress is ready because he had his own logical reasoning for that. So what will Bose now do because he, ca he cannot fight the masses. So he says that, okay, fine, I'll resign. And, th and that he does. There were a lot of, there was a lot of conciliation and Nehru even tried to uh, talk uh, to Bose regarding this and to take his resignation back and all that story. But Bose, you know, doesn't agree to this. And in any case, Bose resigns. And then uh, Dr. Rajendra Prasad, he became the president of the Congress at this time. And uh, socialists and communists, they also didn't support Bose at this time. This is an interesting part of the, uh, the this topic because Normally, you would expect socialist and the communist to support the uh, Bose resignation. But they were very nationalist and they said, we just cannot let the movement of India, the nationalist movement of India divide. So to avoid the division, even they supported uh, resignation of Subhash Chandra Bose because to them, unity was the most important thing. And after this, uh, in within like two months uh, from this uh, session in, in May 1939, Subhash Chandra Bose formed the forward block. We will discuss this story of the forward block, but not in this lecture, because before you understand the story of the whole story of how Bose contributed, you need to know few certain events that came in between. So we will be covering those events in the next lecture. And then we will again come back to Subhash Chandra. Just to give you a quick summary of uh, what this forward block was, it was a new party. First of all, what is it? It's a new party within the Congress, within the Congress, within Congress. And this, you know, and this party, even he given call for an all India uh, uh, call uh, uh, against uh, uh, actually against an all India Congress committee resolution. See, 
that they wanted to oppose the Congress. So he wanted to give a call at all India level within Congress. He's there. And then because of this action by him, the Congress working committee took disciplinary action against him. And Bose was removed from the presidentship of the Bengal Provincial Congress Committee. Plus, he was also debarred from holding any office for three years. Now, obviously, Bose just cannot sit down and live in oblivion. He will be doing things. And those are the few things we will be discussing in the upcoming lectures. But before that, I will need to build up uh, the background for th that particular lecture. And thus, we will be discussing the that in the upcoming that next lecture so that would be all regarding the content of the lecture and i hope you are sharing it with other people the more the shares the better the videos that's a promise i have for you and if you like the video please do not forget to click on the like button and if you want all these e videos to come in your email box then you will need to subscribe to us and that you can do by clicking over here on this button so that is all and thank you so much for watching this video Thank you.